please. Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank you very much, Professor Turina, for this invitation, and my great friend, the most powerful man that I know, Leo Boccheria. It's a long, long friendship, and I'm really very proud to be here and very happy. Uh, this presentation will be very political, uh, strange, and correct, because it's going a little against what is the normal sens sensibility that we have in this, in this particular uh, historical moment. But if you look at the literature, the data of extensive use of arterial graph are conflicting. And if you see this paper published by Blackstone and Little, patients who received two mammary grafts have decreased risk of death, reoperation, and angioplasty. That's good. And it's logical also. However, the benefit that can be anticipated in the late onset of angina by using the sensitive arterial grafting was found to be disappointingly small, Paul Sergent in 98. The incremental benefit of two mammary over one mammary plus a Safino strategy has been difficult to document despite its apparent logic, and this was again loop and lightly. Uh, we are waiting for the result of this uh, randomized trial uh, that is uh, uh, promoted uh, by David Tagger. And the only data that we have at one year is that we know that when we use uh, two mammaries, there is uh, a small absolute increase in need for sternal wood reconstruction. That's the only data that we have at one year of this trial. But if you look at the uh, meta-analysis as this one, it's written, even this meta-analysis doesn't take into account the randomized trial, that there is a benefit for the two mammaries. So there is some uh, discussion about that. But uh, there is also the suspicion that some result can be pushed by the uh, analysis, the statistical analysis that is performed. In effect, if you see a, a, an artery in this experience uh, published by SUMA, at 10 years you have exactly the same patency that the vein. So uh, we, we, can, we can presume that the, the conduit is really very important, but also the art, the coronary is also very important. And this is a very simple show in this paper that show the patency of the same conduit, uh, internal thoracic artery, that is anastomized to left anterior descending, to diag diagonal circumflex of the right coronary, and the patency are different, but the conduit is the same. And also in this paper that uh, 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 compare uh, radial artery and saphenous grafts, you see that artery is uh, reacts at saphenous. So, uh, we know that the result that we can achieve with uh, a, a Safin's graph can be better than we knew in the, in the past if the graft is handled with great uh, care. And the result that published by this group are really outstanding. And, and the, the Venus graph in this group of the patient was as, with the same patency that the artery. This is a very well-known study that showed that uh, the uh, internal mama artery versus saphenous vein, of course, the patency is much better for internal mammary artery versus saphenous graft. But if you see, uh, if you consider the patient that you have after one week, the both uh, conduit opened, this difference is become smaller. And we can see that also the venous react differently if it's anastomosed to different coronaries. A venous works much better in left anterior descending compared to right coronary. And we know that the venous react completely different if the coronary is bigger than two millimeter or less than two millimeter. Though the same conduit reacts completely different if there is in different environment subset. So probably the conduit is important, but the uh, hydraulic uh, 
condition are really very important. And this is a very old uh, experiment that was published, I think, 25 years ago or more. If we have an animal and we tie the femoral artery and we do a, a bypass with the saphenous vein in, in the right side and the same in the left side, but we, in this situation we keep open the, the, the femoral artery, we see that the intimal hyperplasia, that is the cause of occlusion of venous graft, it's completely different in the two subsets. In this part, where also a bend is uh, uh, put around the vein, so the pulsation in this situation is zero, but we have a, a good pressure and a good flow, because all blood is diverted toward the bypass, we see that there is completely different in intimal uh, uh, hyperplasia in that portion, where the pulsation is exactly the same in that, but the flow it's completely different. Also, in, the, uh, in the, this part, you see that the hyperplasia is less in this part where the velocity of the flow is higher than in this part. In effect, we know that uh, the adaptive response of the vessel change according with the hydrodynamic condition. If the pressure is increasing, the media in the vein is increased, and this is good because this is, uh, is adaptation, uh, 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 other pressure, higher pressure, but also the intima is increased. So this determines the attrition of the graft. But if we see the velocity, we see that the media is increased, and it's good because it's an adaptation uh, way to resist to the pressure, and the intima goes down. So this is uh, a very good situation to keep a graft open for a long time. And the shear stress also is very important. The, st the shear stress increased the NO uh, production, and you see that the media remains the same, but the intima decreased. So these two things are really very important to keep open a venous graft. And this is important because the velocity and the shear stress change according with the shape of the graft. If the stride, that is perfect, but if is uh, in um, bifurcation, the low shear stress region are here and there, and this is bad because in this situation, the hyperplasia of the intima is really, really important. Also, the bending of the graft are really important because if your bend is too important, the velocity of the flow, so the sharing stress is changed and it's very high here, but it's very low. And in this position, there is all the hydrodynamic situation to increase the intima thickness and promote the occlusion of the graft. This is a, another interesting experience. You see the mammary that is kept in pressure, and the mammary that is kept in pressure plus stretching. And you see the timidine incorporation, that means the metabolism of, uh, of the wall, is remain the same. The vein is different because if you put pressure on that, of course there is arterialization modification, so there is an increase of uh, 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 timidine incorporation and there is an increase on number of the cells. And when the, the, the saphenous graph is stretched also, reacts very badly because it increases more the number of cells. So, if I want to have a good vein in good condition because I cannot choose the, 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 the quality of the coronaries that I have to graft and I, I, I cannot choose the resistance of this coronary, I, I have to, to try to have high flow, low resistance and low pulsation. To, to try to demonstrate this idea, we, we perform a Lampel para, parameter model to evaluate the fluid dynamics of different coronary bypasses. And this is an electric model that can produce this type of curves. You see the pressure in the ventricle, the pressure in the aorta, you see the flow in the left main with a component that is systolic and the, the greater component that diastolic, the flow in left anterior descending, and the flow in the very peripheral uh, uh, artery. This is changed the, the scale, as you can see. 
So in a good situation, we have a flow that has a, a systolic component that is lower than diastolic component. And this is what you see in the OR if you do a Doppler in your mammary artery, uh, anastomized to left anterior descending. There is a systolic component that is not higher than diastolic component. And this is the best that we can produce. But if I put a mama, a saphenous vein on left anterior descent, you see that the flow, the, the dynamics is completely different from the internal mammary artery graft. You see that there is a huge component systolic and another important component in diastole. In the mammary it's completely different because the mammary start further uh, uh, to the aortic root as when you do the, we perform the coronary bypass, we pose the saphenous graft. So how I can bring my saphenous graft to a similar pathway of the internal mammary artery? If I do a sequential venous graft, I reduce the uh, sum of resistance and I have a, a flow that is very similar to the mammary arteries with a systolic component that is lower than a diastolic component, completely different for a single venous graft. And this is an example of one uh, saphenous graft in a sequential way, 16 years after the intervention. The techniques should be very careful because the uh, path of grafts should be very harmonic and all kinking have, must be avoided. For this reason, there is some uh, anastomoses that are in a classical diamond shape, other ones are almost parallel to the coronary, just to keep an harmonic shape, an harmonic pathway of the graft. Uh, this idea is true also in the clinics. If we look at this paper by Robert Dion, there is no difference in complementary saphenous graft, there is no difference between right internal thoracic artery and sequential saphenous graft right to right coronary, distal circumflex, and distal right coronary. So it seems that in this paper our idea were completely fulfilled. This paper is the old one. They show almost the same thing, that there is a very good patency of uh, uh, mammary on the left anterior descending. There is a relative bad results of the vein. There is a really very good results of sequential graft in posterior lateral situation. It's not good to put a saphenous venous graft in anterolateral. In this group of the patient, the, mammary, the, inter the anterior descending artery was graft with the, the sequential graft, and this is, is a mistake. And this was exactly the same what was found in this paper, and I show clearly that although more complete revascularization was obtained with sequential vein graft, more events during 15 years follow-up occurred in these patients versus single vein graft patient. But in this particular case, the left anterior descending was incorporated in uh, uh, saphenous uh, sequential graft. We check in our experience patient that we are operating a long time ago just to have a long follow-up period and we found a uh, uh, propensity match patients to population that uh, were divided in one group that you have complete arterial revascularization and the other one that you have the mammary on the left anterior descending and sequential vein graft for right lateral and diagonal uh, coronaries. You see that uh, the baseline characteristics are the same. There is only small differences for the uh, class of the angina and the uh, New York Heart Association class. For the rest, the two populations were uh, exactly the same. It's, uh, there are a, a relative, it's, a, it's a young population, this one, and you know that in a young population, this type, uh, this type of disease, the coronary artery disease, is particularly aggressive. This is the, uh, what was done in OR. There is 3.9 uh, anastomosis in the sequential, 3.2. You see the extracorporeal circulation time. I apologize, uh, Paul, 
for that. And you see that uh, we have uh, almost the uh, same uh, outcome with the same uh, high CU stay. The mortality was exactly the same, it was around uh, less than 1%. And if you see at 15 years follow-up period, we see that cumulative uh, 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 freedom of uh, uh, um, uh, complication were exactly the same. Freedom from angina recurrence was exactly the same. Freedom from acute MI was exactly the same. Freedom from repeat PCA was at 15 years uh, 80%, exactly the same. I think that 80% free from PCA in this group of the patient it can be something that should be stressed out. And if, if you combine all uh, maze, we see that the 15 uh, years, more than 60% of the population is free. We analyze also the difference if the, co the artery was put on the, on the right side or the left side of coronary system, and again, there is no difference at all. So in conclusion, very simple. The mammary artery must be always used in left arterial descending, and the sequential saphenous graft can be used in a sure way in the posterolateral lateral wall. Thank you for your attention. So, Lorenzo, you put us in a difficult position because we have to react. Paul, please. Of course. Paul, would you react first? <clears throat> I, I told that uh, it's not oh, political first, first correct. You. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. A great presentation and interesting uh, theme. I would like to ask you for uh, your harvesting strategy of uh, uh, Safin vein and what is your opinion about endoscopic vein harvesting in depend of uh, this uh, famous uh, New England Journal paper from yeah. Lopez. Uh, the paper that was published and I was, I was sure you from the uh, Sweden show clearly that uh, Safinos graft should be uh, harvested with great care, great care and uh, probably keeping some tissue around that. So I don't think that endoscopic uh, is, a, is a good thing to, to obtain these results. So we, we, we open, we open the, the legs. Um, I, I don't really disagree with, with uh, Mini Kanti, um, but the issue is even more complex. Um, many of the patients we operate today will not have, I have the data, but it's not, I'm not here to show that, um, have many of the patients that I would go like 30, 40 percent of the patients will not even benefit from a single mammary artery to the LED because the benefit of the Lima to the LED versus a venous graft to the LED only comes up at five and six years. If you operate patients who are 85 years old at the time of surgery, I mean, it, will, it makes no difference. That, that's, that's one aspect. And you can clearly show, I can, we can clearly show that we've spent months with Blackstone do, going on the simulation with that. As soon as you bring in comorbidity, which will reduce the life expectancy of the patient, that benefit goes under the p-value, under the p-value of significance. Um, but um, the, the question is what kind of procedure are we going to do? When we drive a car or when we have a cell phone, the cell phone can do a thousand times more than what we demand from it. The software that we use, the Word and the Excel and the PowerPoint, can do a thousand more things than what we use it for. So um, the idea that we had was that, uh, yes, there is a proof of extensive arterial grafting, conditional that the patient lives long enough, but comorbidity is uncertainty. I mean, it's, it's maybe difficult to explain, but comorbidity is uncertainty. Comorbid, that's the, the essence of comorbidity. You can have a short life, you can have a short life expectancy with a lot of comorbidity. You can have a long life expectancy with, with, uh, with comorbidity. It's the uncertainty. Risk is uncertainty. So the question is how, how good do you want to procedure? And what we have decided at a certain moment to do is get out of this discussion and try to make the procedure as good as possible so that it goes way beyond the life expectancy of the patient. It's clear that the reinterventions have stopped. 
Um, the, the early graft failure is very well documented that, that it goes down the early graft failure, but you need a, a, maybe more data and more patients, and, but we have published that. Um, the early graft failure is definitely less with more extensive arterial graft. In fact, it disappears completely with uh, total arterial revascularization. On the long run, the differences might not be that big, and that is logical, because 10, 15, 20 years after surgery, it's the way the patients, if the return of smoking, if the diabetes is under control, the vascular disease, and so on, there's a number of issues. So I, I can agree, but we did not want to touch the aorta. We, don't, we wanted to stop touching the aorta. Now, touch, stop, stopping the aorta, that means that your veins will have to be connected uh, to the mammary artery. So there were a, no, a number of more complex issues. Uh, basically, we, we are. We, 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 I agree uh, with you. There is some expert that probably should be stressed out. First one, I agree. If we operate a patient that is 80 years old, it's it's it's, it's another problem. But this group of the patient, it's very young. It's 50 years. <coughs> so the la the uh, life expectancy. Surely, it should be uh, very long. And also, this is a group of the patients in which diabetes is relatively low, because it's 15%. So, uh, the idea is that in this situation, the graft lasts a really long, long time. We have the data, 15 years. And the patient with, uh, checked with the uh, uh, treadmill test, there is no, no angina. So, this is to demonstrate, in my idea, I can be wrong, that saphenous venous graft, in very good hemodynamic condition, reacts in a very, very good way. And also, with this type of surgery, the number of anastomosis that you can perform, also in patients, they have very bad quality of coronaries because you can do a sequential graft in very small vessels and there is no occlusion that. So you have the advantage of have a higher number of anastomosis and you can uh, uh, face uh, graft, uh, coronaries that you have a, a, good, a, a bad qualities. Because in this way, it's not very important the resistance that one single coronary has, but is the, 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 the sum of all resistance of all coronaries. And if you have to perform angioplasty in these patients, something, it's, uh, sometimes it's very easy to perform angioplasty on one coronary that has become the source of the blood if there is the uh, occlusion of the proximal anastomosis. Professor. Totalina. Lorenzo, in my opinion, you did not address one of the interesting aspects of internal memory anastomosis, and this is the protective effect of the internal memory anastomosis on the distal coronary circulation. It's extremely rare to see a significant de novo disease distal to a properly functioning internal memory anastomosis. Every long practicing coronary surgeon knows that. And I'm a, all my practice, I had one single case where I had to go again where the stenosis developed in the distal third of LAD. The fact is that it was uh, shown in a recent paper in Alice Thoracic Surgery that there is much less a progression of this lateral sclerosis when you have an IMA anastomosis as opposed to saphenous vein graft and the radial artery. Radial artery has exactly the saphenous vein graft, no distal protective effect. Internal memory artery does. You are, you are right. But if you look the 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 shape of the curves that you have, uh, the mammary artery is protect the vessel because the systolic component is not so high as the venous has, because the venous is uh, uh, anastomosed to the uh, first part of the aorta, where the DP it's very high. So the the the, the, the shape of the wave it's like that, and this is the region where you anastomose your venous. Your mammary, he have no this component systolic because it start uh, farther than, than the upper part of the aorta. So the fact that the artery, the, the mammary has uh, in, the, in the distal 
proportion, a number of restenosis less, in my opinion, is determined by the type of the curves that you have in the mammary. And with this system, the, 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 the shape of the curve, it's very similar in the venous and the mammary. Well, I just... Yes, well, I had to comment as well, but uh, no, no, just, just, just go, just go on. After it's, it's, that, we have a, a young comment. student. You have to be to. Sure. <laughs> he's, a, he's a young, young Russian colleague, Professor Pokiria. Oh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I'd like. <laughs> you know what? Um, <clears throat> several years ago, I insisted and requested, and we started it, doing shantography or mammography on the table until the chest is closed. Um, those patients with three, five uh, shunts, six shunts, doesn't matter. And it was 32% uh, of technical problems, problems, you know? Because we did coronary, I mean angiography. And that's very different what from, for example, um, they do in Monaco in one week before, three, four days before leaving. That's very different. My question is whether, because we are talking about, you know, no, nobody made angiography for those patients who were studied in 10 years, let's say, in five years, in 20 years. Uh, how can then you distinguish uh, the problems uh, considering uh, the technical aspects from this DPDT, because that's true from one point, that when you use mammary artery, which was proposed by Colossal, you know, and he's, uh, this year, 60 years, we are having this celebration in June. Absolutely. Yeah, and from, uh, from this, but I, I'm not sure, you know, that maybe the PDT is uh, uh, important, but not so much for Venus, probably. But how can you distinguish uh, from those technical aspects. You know, very experienced people were doing. Sometimes they made it over the stenosis, you know. Sometimes Venus, Venus was, there. you know, a little bit rotated. Totally. A little bit, you know, and it changed the uh, scenario. So, uh, what should we have in the uh, imagination uh, when we're talking about we, In a certain period, uh, we used the, the system that it's uh, perform uh, imaging with the different uh, of, uh, of uh, color. And nothing except, nothing except it, it, geography, you know. And, 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 <laughs> it, and it was absolutely, absolutely no good. Um, technically, you are perfectly right. During the, the, the performing the different anastomosis, every anastomosis is checked with fluid, and, but it, more important is the position of the anastomosis in the, in, the, in the connection with the, the, the second one anastomosis. This is, is a crucial to avoid kinking, because if you have a kinking, it's, 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 it doesn't work at all, for the reason that we have seen. So, and to say that there is a, a, a technical problem in uh, proximal anastomosis, this can be, we have no system, but if it's closed, uh, when we close the sternum, you see in the e in, uh, EKG, surely. So, but if you have the proximal one that is closed, yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. You, you see immediately. Of course, you don't know exactly if one is not working. Well, I, I, I just have a comment. I, I think I'm a bit intermediary between Paul Sergeant and you. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a healthy patient of 50, 50 something, uh, I would use bilateral mammary artery. I do a Y construction and a full arterial graft. But if there is an emergency, if the patient is coming in a very bad shape on the table, then the muscle is going to be more important than the long-term survival. So in this particular case, when the patient is coming, uh, well, of course, uh, of, of course, if it's a message, but as, as well, if there is on the ECG an obvious ischemic, even on the LAD, I put a vein because I want full flow directly to the vein to save the muscle. The second point are the lungs. If the, if the patient has very bad lungs, a lot of emphysema, I think, I think it's probably not wise to use a bilateral mammary artery anyway. I think you should not be an ayatollah of the bilateral mammary artery if the lungs are very bad, because if you, if you happen to, to open both pleura, it can have a consequence on the postoperative case. The third point 
is the discrepancy between the length of the mammary artery and the kind of distal caliber and the volume of the heart. If I have a big heart and I can see that with my Y, with, with putting the right mammary artery free, I will reach just the posterior lateral branch of the right, but not the posterior descending. I think instead of taking a chance to, to stretch the mammary artery to reach the posterior descending, I prefer to put a vein because we have shown in my previous publication that the remote area, the distal circumflex and the right, the, the advantage of the mammary artery there is not really very, very important. And my last advice, and I'd like to, the comment of, uh, of Lorenzo, if you use a vein, never single. Try to never use a single vein. Try to find a construction that you do it sequential. So sometimes I replace, let's say, a circumflex by where, where I would put a, a mammary artery by a vein because I want to do the posterior descending and I don't want to use it single. What do you think about this attitude? Uh, I, I, I want to say that, of course, it's very good to use uh, uh, artery. That is evident because this is a logical. So in, in young people you use uh, the second mammary and the radial and so on. But to use a, a vein is not is not a mistake in sequential. Sorry, for me the for me the radial artery is like a phrenic nerve. It's not an arterial graft. <coughs> it depends. It depends on the quality. It depends where you put the, the the radial artery. Because, for example, if you have a redo procedure with a relatively young patient that you have a, a marginal that's really very big, probably in this type of the, of the patient to use a radial artery because you have no other conduit can be a, can be a good idea. It's, it's evident that if you use a saphin, it's much, much, much better to use in sequential way for, for the reason that we have shown. There's no question about that. 